Welcome to MBK Chem. Today we learn how a solar cell work. A solar cell is made of two types of semiconductors, called P-type and N-type silicon. What is different between conductors, semiconductors and insulators? Conductors, these are the material, which allow the current to pass through them. These have very low electrical resistance and are available in a large variety having different properties. Also the number of valence electrons is less than 4. The valence band and the conduction band overlap each other. Examples are copper, brass, aluminium, silver, gold, bronze. Semiconductors, these are the materials which possess the electrical resistivity in between that of conductors and insulators. They are used for the manufacture of diodes and transistors. Also the number of valence electrons is equal to 4. There is a small forbidden energy gap of about 1 eV between the conduction and the valence band. Examples, germanium, silicon, selenium. An insulator is a material that has very high electrical resistance. It does not allow the flow of current. There are no free electrons in insulators thus they do not conduct electricity. Thus they are used for protection against shock. The p-type silicon is produced by adding atoms such as boron or gallium that have one less electron in their outer energy level than does silicon. Because boron has one less electron than is required to form the bonds with the surrounding silicon atoms, an electron vacancy, or hole, is created. The n-type silicon is made by including atoms that have one more electron in their outer level than does silicon, such as phosphorus. Phosphorus has five electrons in its outer energy level, not four. It bonds with its silicon neighbor atoms, but one electron is not involved in bonding. Instead, it is free to move inside the silicon structure. A solar cell consists of a layer of p-type silicon placed next to a layer of n-type silicon. In the n-type layer, there is an excess of electrons, and in the p-type layer, there is an excess of positively charged holes. Near the junction of the two layers, the electrons on one side of the junction, n-type layer, move into the holes on the other side of the junction, p-type layer. This creates an area around the junction, called the depletion zone, in which the electrons fill the holes. When all the holes are filled with electrons in the depletion zone, the p-type side of the depletion zone now contains negatively charged ions, and the n-type side of the depletion zone, where electrons were present, now contains positively charged ions. The presence of these oppositely charged ions creates an internal electric field that prevents electrons in the n-type layer to fill holes in the p-type layer. When sunlight strikes a solar cell, electrons in the silicon are ejected, which results in the formation of holes, the vacancies left behind by the escaping electrons. If this happens in the electric field, the field will move electrons to the n-type layer and holes to the p-type layer. If you connect the n-type and p-type layers with a metallic wire, the electrons will travel from the n-type layer to the p-type layer by crossing the depletion zone and then go through the external wire back of the n-type layer, creating a flow of electricity. Thank you so much for your watching.